Time to talk about the naughty publisher Activision and all of the fun things that are going on surrounding them. Because there's actually quite a lot. Not only are they being called out for, uh, well, everything they've done publicly a lot of the time in big industry events, but also um, sued. <laughs> Drama? Bobby Kotick involved? Fiduciary duty? Has it been breached? Oh. Yeah, well, at least... Shareholder lawsuit. Yep, at least a, a couple of shareholders completely believe that Bobby... Uh, and co, the board, acted purely in their own self-interest instead of shareholder interest, effectively using the Microsoft buyout to um, kind of golden parachute their way out of the, the whole situation they were in. And you're like, okay, well, do you have any proof to back that up? And then Richard Hogue goes in and goes, let's break things down. Very interesting. Based on the cliff notes? <laughs> yeah. I think they totally saved their skin. But we'll yep. dive into it. First, mm -hmm. though, they're getting a wee bit roasted. So... The DICE Awards are um, sort of often called the, the Oscars of video games. I mean, the Game Awards are also called that. Yeah. But I think it's more getting at the Game Awards are like a more of a big consumer-facing event, yes. whereas DICE is quite glitzy within the industry. Yeah. Is, I think, the way to put it. Yeah. So in the opening speech, as always, Greg Miller talked about uh, the abuse faced by staff. He said, you know, uh, wait for yeah. the first 30 seconds into the YouTube video yeah. so we're not demonetized. Bobby Kotick. Mm -hmm. Uh a whole bunch of applause, cheers, and stunned silence, which is very confusing to me. I mean, I, I maybe there's a few business bell ends there. I think the stunned silence, as far as uh, as far as he explains it, was very much that um, people just didn't expect him to be that upfront with it, and you know, because he literally did just say he just said it, like yeah, and it, and it was like yeah, yeah, right yeah. on, <laughs> right on. <laughs> So that's uh, that's quite fun. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now, as I'm speaking to Kotaku, uh, as we were closing close to the Dice Awards, I knew I wanted the monologue to say something real about both uh, NFTs and the abuse that's happened. I'd seen Jeff get blowback at the Game Awards for not naming names, so it's just like, fuck it, I'm going in. Uh, now, during the keynote, uh, Laura Melee, of course, we talk about her plenty in this channel. She's the Chief Studio Officer of Electronic Arts. Uh, she said the same in a more professional way. Mm-hmm. Uh, she said, let's face it, there have been a number of rough headlines, stories about negligence and lawsuits, all stemming from leaders who fail to uphold standards we've come to expect. Leaders who fall short of standard, basic standards must go. Mm -hmm. So, good. Yep, More is. consensus from other companies is a good thing. Yep, and I think uh, there's a little bit of it being happening at DICE, where it's, you know, all, you know, obviously there's going to be a lot of developers there, but obviously a lot of developer heads and studio leads and publishers there who you know can be argued as they're the reason for a lot of the things going wrong but when it comes to ea who have obviously uh crunch and bad product management aside haven't had any of these issues that laura's talking about at least none that have been like so major that they've broken out versus ea have effectively dealt with them internally yes the idea that people are now happy to talk to this and say listen this shit's happening we need to make sure it doesn't happen is just going to mean the next <laughs> hope if they can solve it quickly, the next wave of big video games we get in two, three, four years will all be better for it. Yeah, that is certainly the hope. Mm -hmm. So, there's that going on. It's kind of expected. Yeah. Now, let's talk a little bit about uh, Phil getting a, good, uh, getting a good deal. Yep, he, right? he certainly did. <laughs> because it's, it's an embattled company with fantastic assets, surely. Therefore, yep. they would be able to leverage uh, you know, that position to get a good deal. So, let's, mm -hmm. uh, let's dive into this, right? Yeah. Uh, you know, Bill. Bill, I don't know who he is. <laughs> Phil is hes also a businessman. Mm -hmm. Microsoft obviously wants to make an acquisition for the best prices they can get, which is hardly a surprise. So basically, according to Richard Hoag, who is going over Activision's proxy statement and how this whole acquisition business went down, according to him, Bobby Kotick either wanted out really, really hard and Phil Spencer knew it, or Phil and Satya combined were just so bloody powerful that uh, Bobby had to end up rolling over. Mm -hmm. And this uh, is the sort of thing that actually can get quite serious, though. So yes. as we dive into it then, Bobby has always said that $95 was a great price for the stock. No, <laughs> uh, because we know that its stock should be worth more than that. Yeah. Because I think if you look at the very fundamentals of this company, they have a large quantity of developers. They have a large amount of world-leading IP. Mm -hmm. and they had, in fact, been trading up and around $105 in the in the good times, in the before times, before it all went wrong. Yeah. Right? So 
if this company was at one point valued by the market at $105, well, did it go down below that because of like the most, you know, like the most fundamental sort of reasons? Yeah. Um, now, some people say yes. Some people will, I mean, they'll say yes because like, obviously the long-term prospects of this company are going to be in the shitter if they can't retain talents. Some people will say, uh, well, this was a short-term thing. They can fix it. That valuation is really about their incredible IP and all the amazing things that they can do. Yeah. Therefore, $95 is is a steal for Activision, yeah. right? Indeed. So basically, here are the, the details of this. Mm -hmm. So Phil Spencer and Bobby Kotick were talking on November 19th. And at one point, the conversation turned to Spencer asking if Bobby could hop on a call with Satya to just have a chat about strategic opportunities. This was three days after the Wall Street Journal dropped the nuke and Bobby. So I won't yet enter the mind of the dispenser here. Mm -hmm. He has just read an article from the journal about Bobby, you know, going, Hablu, 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 I will have you killed. Mm -hmm. Down his telephone to, uh, to, to some woman. Yep. I, th I think this is, this is called... Uh, you know, I don't know, is this in the sort of the DJ Khaled terminology? Is this securing the bag? Is this yeah. ripping the door off the hinges, taking the hinges and putting it in the fuckboy's hands? Is it something like that? This is yep. clearly Phil just identifying this this opportunity. It's clearly yep. Xbox knowing that, like, the Bobster is fucked. Yeah. He's, he is utterly fucked here. Yeah. So he's going to be in a really weak position. Yeah, he's going to be in a weak position. He's going to want out. And now they have the possibility of, because uh, it was... Uh, Around, around about a week after that dropped, after they had this conversation, their stock price was about sixty dollars. And if you're if you have the money to buy something that's you know sixty dollars stock, even though you know the assets are worth well over a hundred, what you've got there is Activision is actually on sale. They've just taken they've just put a Steam sale on Activision, but instead of the games, the whole thing. And Phil's like, hmm, Saja. Can we make a move here, please? And, you know, obviously they immediately got in touch. And yeah. then it, it's funny because it was also <laughs> talked about that one day after Spencer was like, we're reevaluating every aspect of our relationship with Activision Blizzard. He oh. must have been, he must have been such a smile on his face when he delivered that, just like <laughs> Yeah, we are. <laughs> oh oh Phil, you yeah. dog. <laughs> Wow. Now, the next day, Satya said that Microsoft is interested in exploring a strategic combination, but needed more info on their future. Actly did not want to spill those beans. Now, on the 26th, Satya said they wanted to do an all-cash buy at 80 bucks a share. Yep. They were 60 bucks a share at that point in time. A few days later, though, Bobby told Phil that 90, between 90 and $105, and they can talk. Now, I just <laughs> want to point something out here. Mm -hmm. That's yeah, that's a low ball. Like, what, one of the fucking... Imagine price anchoring with a range. That's yeah. insane. Now, I get the ballpark of, you know, we're, we'd be looking at a six-figure value, something mm -hmm. like that as a ballpark. But you're giving hard enough. Bobby! This is how you negotiate, Bobby! <laughs> but Bobby probably knows this is not how you uh, yeah. negotiate. Uh, I think Bobby probably had this, like, 95 in... My, well, we'll get into it, but yeah. that's just very interesting because if you say this... You know you're not getting 105. Yeah, yeah. That's not... You could give us 105, but I just told you I might accept 90. Eh, that's wild. Yeah. Uh, and now that's wild in a way that I think is extremely unprofessional. Extremely telling. Like very, yeah. very telling. Now, another undisclosed company approached Bobby uh, via an unsolicited email to buy. Microsoft mm -hmm. pressured them on time, though, constantly pushing and trying to just get things done because they, they knew, you know, hey, <laughs> there's a hot deal in Activision. Let's go, right? Mm -hmm. Let's secure that bag. Uh, an individual offered to buy Blizzard um, outright yeah. and take it private. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's wild, though. Yeah. So what individual is able to afford, like... I mean, this is obviously at a lower evaluation, yeah. maybe like 50 billion. Well, uh, the uh, yeah, that's the thing, because the individual, it's not super clear, because it is the uh, the individual offered to buy Blizzard outright, and then also offered like a full partial takeover of Activision Blizzard. So I'm maybe thinking that they were just kind of anchoring for a little bit, and you kind of think, you have to, you have to think to yourself, 
Who wants to buy Blizzard Entertainment? Could be any number of people. But there was another thing, which is, uh, kind of skipping a little bit ahead here, but that individual B, they call called individual B in the, uh, in, the, in the legal text, they had prior dealings with Activision Blizzard, and Activision um. Blizzard decided not to follow that line because they were afraid that it would look bad because they had prior dealings if the information got out, and they didn't trust that an NDA would be held to. That's why they didn't continue to talk with the individual B. So who do you think individual B could possibly be? Oh, J. Allen Brack. J. Allen Brack, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, so are people thinking it was Mike? The the only person that I think has publicly had prior dealings with him that would be able to... I mean, I don't know how much Blizzard... Mike's would, not going to have I don't know how much money. Blizzard would be unless, worth like. Unless Mike would be able to come in as an individual, but with a massive amount of investment oh, behind him. sorry, yes. It, wa- it wasn't an individual able. doing this fully out of their own pocket. It was an individual who... Okay, It right. was an individual who, who was approaching as an individual, but they would go and get co-investors. So you think of who this could be, and you're like... Uh, Richard Hogue was saying that it's fairly fairly certain, based on how it's talking about prior dealings, it's likely one of the existing founders, one of the, the co-founders of Blizzard, and if you're thinking big money, now they didn't approach as a business, they approached as a person. Which is interesting because almost every Blizzard founder has a business that they would go th- probably do this by. You would expect, you know, Dreamhaven would be interested in Blizzard as yeah. opposed to Mike Morheim or uh, War- or whatever uh, Metzen's uh, thing's called. I can't remember what it was. Had to have been a yeah. very big Kickstarter. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, of course. Yeah, of course. But, you know, realistically speaking, I think I would be willing to say it's a high enough likelihood to be Mike Morham that that's the biggest guess that I'm capable of. But can you imagine Mike Morham like, I will buy Blizzard back now, please, thank you. You know, yeah, there's a lot of good in that, obviously. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I I don't, and there's like the little fanboy in me is being like, oh, that would have been so great. But I also feel like I, I need to be professional and balanced. Yeah. And what I would then say as well, a bunch of Blizzard's problems were Blizzard's problems. They yeah. existed under Mike. Um, I would like to think that Mike, uh, having learned a whole bunch of painful lessons, would do his utmost to make sure they don't happen again. Yeah. Um, but, you know, there's that. And then also, even in the video game front, mm. there is the likes of, uh, I mean, frankly, Blizzard spinning their wheels for many, many, many years, um, you know, having a pretty high rate of those failed projects. Um, you know, the, it's not all golden everywhere. I, I suppose. Sure. Not to say that Microsoft do things perfectly. There's mm-hmm. their whole uh, treatment of video games uh, in, in the past. Uh, Scalebound fans. <laughs> uh-huh. uh, yeah. Even Halo fans. I mean, hey, 343, they've had a funky time. Some of those leaks did talk about Microsoft doing a bit of the diddling on them and, you know, just it being quite hard to get things done. So who knows? But um, well, maybe things are just on the up with sort of Phil and Satya. You know, eras. These two have came more and more into the uh, into the four. Seems to be. Yeah. So that that's a wild story. Now, by <laughs> December eighth, yeah. Phil had let Bobby know that Microsoft were just about to do a formal proposal. Now, the fact that they offered all cash is massive because Company A would have likely uh, done a stock trade, which would be less valuable and more complicated, even if it could theoretically be worth more. Mm-hmm. Uh, the board would then have to consider, like you know, Company A's kind of long term, yeah. right? Because it's a stock trade. Um, which is a bit more difficult, whereas cash is it's cash money. You know yeah. what it is. Yeah, it's a case of you know th- this is you're we're going to sell for ninety five dollars a share. Not we're going to sell for five dollars or fifteen dollars, and then you know roughly about eighty ninety dollars in company A share. Oh yeah, by the way, company A A share is projected to be this. It came from this. It used to be this. All that stuff can get quite complicated. Obviously, you know you're thinking about a shares value and how it changes over time. But just like, here's here's cash. It's, I mean, like with most things, a big handful of cash makes things substantially easier on yeah. everyone. Yeah, totally. So, man, wild. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Oh, holy shit. Okay. Now, all individual B, apparently they had the, oh, we've yeah. already done that, the prior dealings. So, was it Mike? Hmm. Now, Microsoft, uh, funny enough, you know, Bobby gives them this $90 to $105 range. Microsoft, they went with the $90. Surprised that? Yep. Very surprised. Wow. Mm-hmm. Uh, on December 10th and said they needed a response by Monday. Yeah, that was a Friday, by the way. <laughs> yes, so that's obviously done for, you know, for pressure. Yeah. Now, they had uh, three other options, C, D, and E. Yeah, they were all three companies. Yep, they, uh, they're they also considered putting themselves up for sale publicly. 
C didn't bother uh, talking for long enough to sign an NDA, but D and E did. Now, E said they weren't in a position to do it. D was evaluating. C then came back with uh, some interest being expressed. Yep. As for what these companies are, you could maybe think Tencent. You could think NetEase. Um, Sony could possibly afford it. Yeah, it's like in terms... Hard to know. Uh, considering a lot of their conversations were about how they were, you know, they were evaluating it. They were figuring positions out. It wouldn't all be cash. It's that kind of thing of maybe a bit of a stock trade here and there. Uh, and also, like, they came, they came back and forth, so clearly there was a lot of discussions as to are we in the position to physically do this? Can we afford it? You know, it, it, does it make sense for us? So I looked at, like, the general ranking of gaming companies and stuff, and there are literally only four companies with a market cap bigger than Activision Blizzard's, which I think is obviously, you know, you can't be a smaller company and buy Activision Blizzard. That's not how it works. The bigger fish eats the slightly smaller fish. So the only four companies were Microsoft... Sony, Tencent, and Netties. Mm -hmm. They're the only four companies in gaming that could afford it, or rather that could, you know, feasibly afford it. So I have no idea who the hell uh, one of these companies could be. And I think a couple of them might have been like board uh, partners or allies or friends outside of gaming, just trying to eat them up. Be like, okay, well, here, we just, we just need, we need some sort of fix here. And I haven't been able to figure out who that could possibly have been, but certainly, uh, Certainly interesting. That's a challenging one. Yep. Uh, now, things that happen in December because Activision have got to move downward their financial forecasting mm -hmm. because Vanguard... Uh, <laughs> tanked? Yeah, Vanguard kind of tanked. Mm -hmm. Basically, things are not going well for them in general. And it basically seems like the Activision board just couldn't really find anyone else to help them. Now, all the while, yep. Phil Spencer's just like, hey, Bobby, you ready to sell yet? Yeah, like Bobby, basically like Bobby. Yeah, according to the document, it was like basically every other day or so. Mrs. Doyle shit. Yeah, it's like Spencer. Obviously, these people call each other all the time, but straight up just Phil. But I like it's like Mr. Spencer uh, got in contact with Mr. Connick to ask about an update on the deal. You're like, <laughs> nice. Imagine just like if you wake up in the morning, Phil Spencer's like, well, Bobby, you ready to go yet? All right, well, talk to you in a couple hours. That's Can't it, like because it. Phil Spencer is, in <laughs> fact, from Cookstown, Northern <laughs> Ireland. <laughs> yep. But, yeah, so it's kind of wild now. Mm -hmm. These calls are happening. The board then says, you know, okay, Bobby, proceed. Try to get to 100. Our lowest is 95. Now, at this stage, the, the job of Bobby is not to sell tonight for 95. No. Bobby's job is to push for 100. Yeah, or 105, like his original offer. Like Yeah. <laughs> right? So at this stage, they can go for Company D or they can go for Microsoft. But then Satya, less than three weeks after this whole thing started, just calls Phil. And I suppose he's also, for, you know, calling yep. with the Cookstown accent if you're doing yep. the impression. Yep. Yep. <laughs> well, boss, how's $93 a share? Uh, Bobby then just gave up the goose. Yeah. I cannot <laughs> believe this. It's so funny. I cannot believe that Bobby gives up the goose. This is insane. Mm -hmm. Just saying... He wasn't authorized to agree at $93. He said only only 95 Now, the yes. thing is, Bobby has been just f flipping things for money for a long, 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 long since, time. Since he was approximately three years old. Yes. Because he uh, one, of, one of his personal stories is that one of the first things he did when he was, you know, vaguely lucid as a human at three years or four years of age, maybe, is uh, he sold his mother's ashtray to a neighbor for a couple dollars. Yeah. And that's what started his He's capitalist crusade. No, do you think that somebody did that at age three? <laughs> oh, gosh. At goddamn age three mm. is going to make a a basic mistake like this yeah. in one of the highest stake negotiations of his entire life. Yeah, he just showed his cards entirely. No. Nah. No. Nah. So hmm. basically he just said, Look, here here's our lowest. Yep. It's two dollars more. They were by the way, they want me to get five, you know, another seven dollars, but I'll give it to you for two. Yeah, it's it. It very much comes across like, and th this is Activision perspective. By the way, this is the this is the proxy uh, statement that Activision actually put forward. Yeah. So this is it in the best possible light for what they want to tell the shareholders. Also, it has to be literally true, of course. But it's that case where he just went, yeah, I'm, I'm. A, it feels like he's against the board if you follow. Because yeah. the board are like, try to get 100, but you're authorized to sell 95. You're not allowed to sell 93. So he just goes, eh. sorry. It, 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 it is like he went, sorry, dude. The boss the boss says I have to sell 95. That's all I can do. They're like, wild. Who side are you on? Oh, no, his own. 
Exactly. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> and the, the argument here is the way that Bobby uh, handled this could be uh, in, in sort of breach of his fiduciary duty, basically. Yep. Um, because ultimately for shareholders of Activision mm-hmm. Blizzard, they, you know, it hasn't, it's not as good. Yeah, because... You know, it's, pretty, it's pretty cut and dry. Yeah, because what I guess, to put it like in a way that I think is uh, fairly simple to understand, is that Bobby's holding on to your, uh, your, I guess, your goods, your coins, your valuables, and he's like, okay... These are worth a fluctuating value based on what the board does, based on how the company goes. Uh, so, I'm going to say they're worth $95, and I'm going to sell them for $95 on your behalf. That's what he effectively did. And your elder's like, what do you mean $95? This shit was worth 100 a couple months ago. Why are you telling me this is a good price? This is literally all your fault. This is not, you did, you did not act. Looking at this deal, you did not do your due diligence in yeah. terms of getting me you did not sell this for as high as possible you sold this for whatever worked for you if you wanted to be super bullish you could say that you know given that it's call of duty yeah that in the hands of microsoft it could be worth a decent bit more yeah. than 105 a share yeah i mean that that's the thing you, like you, that's one of the things he goes to satya goes well Saya, you know you're getting a big discount on this one but um i really feel like with Call of Duty being this landmark IP with all the mobile stuff you'll get from uh, King, from with all of Blizzard's future that we have shared with you in this long-range plan, I think you could turn this easy into $150 a share, so I'll take 110 I'll take 110 We've got other people interested. We're not going to play games to you trying to rush this through at full speed, trying to just pressure us to push it through because you know we're in a bad spot the minute. I'm not going to fall for your ploy. We're going to delay. We're going to find our best options. Instead, we're just like... Because the, the thing here is that there is no real impetus to sell. Yeah. They could have just trucked along. And obviously, they were in a tight spot. And Microsoft buying them pulled them out of it. Because all of the articles calling Bobby a bastard stopped immediately, basically. Uh, except for, you know, Greg Miller at Dice. But all of that, all of that was... It, that's one way it could have went. There's nothing to say Activision didn't just couldn't have looked at another timeline and went, well, if we just hold on to this, we can recover ourselves. That one just went, ah, pff, I'll let Microsoft handle the problem. I'm tired now. That's what it feels like the board yeah. did, which is where the shareholders are like, you just sold my shit for way less than it was worth. And and then when you consider Bobby's uh, golden uh, parachute, yeah, golden parachute, parachute, yes, yeah. careful with that word, uh, yep. with Bobby's golden parachute, and Bobby's very aware of his parachute, of course he is, yeah. And he's also aware that his position's very tenuous. Like, this is pretty clearly Bobby's best way out of this situation. Yeah. Um, so, I'll have to see how that goes. It's a bit wild. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, they're being sued. They're being sued. Uh, yep. Kyle Watson, an Activision Blizzard shareholder in California, is attempting to sue Activision Blizzard because the acquisition is unfair for a number of reasons. The logic is that the board is hoping to procure significant and immediate benefits from themselves, uh, for themselves and senior management, as opposed to being in the best interest of the shareholders, which I think we've very much uh, <laughs> recapped uh, that yes, argument. Indeed. In addition, they actually didn't file enough with the SEC for shareholders to make an informed decision when voting. Then another shareholder, uh, Shiva Stein, 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 yep. Shiva Stein uh, filed a lawsuit that's mostly the same. Although Polygon do point out that she is a prolific securities plaintiff. Second, uh, <laughs> only to the SEC itself. Yep. It's like, imagine as an individual filing so many lawsuits that the only people who have filed more lawsuits than you are the people who are a massive organization designed to file lawsuits. It's quite funny when you think of it that way. Yeah, she's uh, actually done 124 securities lawsuits between uh, 2018 and 2020. So, I don't know if you if you see her being involved with your company, you gotta you gotta be in good behavior. Indeed. Yeah. Um, yeah, now Activision have said that they disagree with the allegations. Mm. What a surprise! And they look forward to presenting their arguments in court. Yeah. I am sure those lawyers do because that is the model. Yeah. Uh, and then, by the way, just mm-hmm. as a final little fuck them. So here's just a little slide from the, uh, from, uh, is, is it from Wilmer Hale? No, this is Reed Smith. Reed Smith. Ah, yeah, never mind. Yeah. I can't read. Yep. Uh, Reed Smith, they're a union busting law firm uh, who are working for Activision Blizzard. And just here's some lovely things. <laughs> so here's the sort of people. Now, this isn't, you know, this is just, this is not saying that these people love unions or anything. It's just saying yeah. that the unions exploit them because yes. they're inherent characteristics, such as lazy, not productive, inefficient, yep. footloose, and fancy free. <laughs> No major obligations or commitments, financial or otherwise. Just the dude. 
I, I love that idea. Uh, rebel, <laughs> anti-establishment, opposes society, structure, management. Mm-hmm. There you go, Jessica Gonzalez is dangerous. Uh, maligner, mm-hmm. uh, something for nothing attitude. Yeah. Whiner and complainer. <laughs> Activist, overqualified for current job position. Can, so, can you imagine like you go. can you imagine being a person and just writing this down like this is all completely fine yeah. this is all entirely reasonable what sort of people yeah yeah see those union people they're all just lazy they're non-productive <laughs> they're just, they're footloose and fancy free uh, imagine writing down footloose and fancy free no major obligations or commitments financial or otherwise and going yes those are extremely negative characteristics we would never want any employee in our business to have no major financial obligations to us. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's, so it's so weird when you go through this because, yeah. you know, you, you could try to find some sort of nested truth by like flipping this a little bit. It's like, yeah. who are the people who, you know, unions are bad for? Yeah. Well, probably uh, like the big team leads, the people with the stock options, okay. the you know, the people who are getting the unbalanced, very good deal, mm-hmm. where there's a lot of people under them who are not getting a good deal. Yeah. Um, so, which is basically to say, this is all just ways to straw man people. Yeah, for sure. Um, and, you know, perhaps people can be like, oh, well, I know that guy, and, you know, he's just never going to work for any company. He's always going to scream and whine or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, but that's just like finding the one absurd uh, example to then, like, just straw man a whole bunch of, uh, a whole bunch of people. Yeah, I mean, I think uh, so, they're a funny business. And, like, I love, it. just by the way, Reed Smith. Business of relationships. <laughs> Not really great relationship business here letting this slide get out, eh, Reed Smith? Yeah. You really, yeah, you cocked that one up. Mm-hmm. Everyone knows now. Yeah, it's interesting. Uh, I think there's there's two ways to read exploit here. There's one way to read exploit, which is this is how unions will get their way. They will exploit these employees to turn them against you, the business owner, which I assume this is. But then there is also the actual, what I think is a genuinely uh, fair read, which is the types of employees unions will exploit, as in they will treat these people poorly or use them for their own benefit, which isn't to the benefit of everyone else. And it's a case where there are little cases where unions will have a whole bunch of lazy people like, well, you don't want to fight for your own rights? Ah, it's fine. We'll fight for them for you. Just give us a couple hundred a month or a couple hundred a year, whatever union dues are. That is, there is a potential world where you're like, okay, True. that's fair. But the substant, given how <laughs> clearly inhuman this is written without any empathy for how people work or live, I think it's also fair to just go, <laughs> this is bullshit. Yeah, get this fucked. is bullshit, yeah. <laughs> get, get fucked, Reed Smith. Yep. And uh, I suppose also get fucked because at the end of the video. Yep. <laughs> okay, that's, the, that's the worst nope. outro I've ever done. <laughs> Indeed. Um, yeah, I mean, look, the, uh, there is a truth in it, though, that the video is over now. So yep. um, I don't really have any closing comments other yep. than... Bloody hell. Could the Bobby saga continue? That would be interesting. Yeah, I, I think I'll, I'll close by uh, kind of saying a little of what uh, Richard said in his video, which is that's like an hour long. He goes into this in great depth. If you're interested, absolutely go because it's it's class. And also, uh, I don't know when he started doing face cams, but he's like a he's really animated, interesting speaker, which is oh, which yes, is cool. Uh, yes. Which is cool. It's great stuff. Um, but he says it's any of his opinion, and it obviously goes for us as well, anything that seems to be seems to make sense to us legally or could make sense in the court of law is obviously who knows how it'll go it's all lawyer bullshit at the end of the day activision could be like this being sued for this could mean absolutely nothing because he could just go no nah, bobby tried his best and the courts could go yeah fair enough You're like, okay should we whatever uh, uh so bobby think, just couldn't do yeah it <laughs> yeah so I, th- go, I, th- I think in this is a case of this likely won't amount to a whole pile of anything i just thought it's really interesting especially thinking who were all these companies that were uh, interested? Who were the companies that were interested but weren't in the position to? Because you look at, you know, you imagine all the big uh, takeover people recently aren't anywhere big enough to buy Blizzard or Activision Blizzard. And also, who the hell was that individual? Was it Mike Morham? Or was it someone? It's the fact that they had prior dealings. That's yeah. the thing that gets me. It's like, who could that be? To me, it has to be it has to be a Blizzard Dex founder because they were interested in X founder. Yeah, Blizzard founder because they were interested in Blizzard. But... Man, it's uh, could be anyone. Yeah, oh, it's it's wild, right? Okay, that's uh, that's it for us. Mm-hmm. Um, maybe someday we'll learn who this mysterious individual is. I hope so. I wouldn't be surprised if it was Morheim at the head of a you know b- bunch yeah. of interested VCs. Yeah, those guys all talk, of course, for sure. Yeah, perhaps we'll never know. 
Anyway, you can check out the other videos on the channel. We do publish essentially almost daily. Yep. And uh, with that said, goodbye. <laughs>